to be frank honest I never really dreamt of playing at a world cup um for me 15 years ago the idea that um I could go full time and earn a decent living out of it wasn't realistic Chloe thank you for joining us how are you and how are you settling into camp um grand great I mean we are kind of day five into our uh, jet lag here over in Brisbane so um feeling a little bit more human <laughs> as of yesterday which is great but uh yeah body is still adjusting but otherwise still feeling great um at a world cup so can't really complain <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your selection into the squad H- how did you find out you had made that final list of 23 and and how did it feel to know you were on the plane? Yeah, so we came into um, kind of two to three week training camp as an extended uh, squad of kind of 32 players, I think it was. So uh, we knew going into that that there was going to be about eight people who were going to miss out, unfortunately. So um, we trained, as I said, for two to three weeks and uh, it was a Tuesday morning. We were going to get told that afternoon. So we trained in the morning and then we all waited um, very anxiously for a couple of hours um, to have kind of a one-to-one meeting with Vera and her backroom staff to be told whether or not we'd be heading to the World Cup. So, um, yeah, it was uh, a very tense time for everyone involved and kind of a mixture of emotions. Um, you know, a lot of really close friends. We're all very tight-knit group here. So, um, yeah, it was, it was very difficult, but... Uh, yeah, some tears of relief and um, just yeah, sheer delight to, to to be picked for such a big um occasion. It's a massive honor. And you've touched upon how how tight you were as a group there. You, you've been together for some time now in in both the pre-camp and now on your camp down in Australia. How important is it to be tight knit as a squad when you head into a tournament like this one? Yeah, it's massive. Um, it's quite a long experience for a lot of us well for most of us as um as an Irish team it's our first major tournament so um we're all used to being together for probably kind of 10 days max two weeks but we had four weeks before we even landed um in Australia and then we've got at least another kind of four weeks from that point to to um to reach kind of the end of the group stage um so it's a very long, long camp and something, as I said, we've never experienced before. So uh, you really do need to be um, a tight knit group to kind of get through that together because there'll be highs and lows. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and I think it's also been a massive part as to, to why we finally qualified. It's, it's a really good group. I mean, we've got some young players and some players who are kind of in the latter half of, of their career and everyone just gets on really well. So, um, there's a great buzz about it and obviously great excitement over the fact that it's our first major tournament. And what does a, a typical day on camp in Brisbane look like? Yeah, so we train in the uh, kind of uh, early evening time. So we'd get up breakfast at 10 um, and then we'd have kind of uh, medical treatments, massage, physio. Um, we usually all head out, well, most of us head out for a, a coffee mid-morning and then We've got a meeting before lunch, tactical meeting before lunch, um, heading for some food and then it's kind of get the feet up for a couple of hours. And then we all head off to, to prehab probably about an hour and a half before training and then travel over to training and um, train for a couple of hours. Uh, it's quite strange because obviously uh, Australia are in the middle of their, their winter. So uh, it's getting dark here at like 6 p.m., which is kind of messing with our bodies as well, let alone the jet lag. So. Yeah, it's really, really weird, but um, at least we're in Brisbane, so the weather's been quite nice. Um, and then, yeah, just get back from training, get food on, on board, and then some more medical treatments if needed. Um, and then just, yeah, try and get the body ready to to sleep. And we're all still kind of adjusting, as I said, but uh, yeah, getting there. Preparations very much in full swing then by the sounds of it. You've, you've got less than a week to go until the start of the World Cup. Just how much are you looking forward to that first match day to roll around? yeah um I can't believe we're a week away from it it's you know just feels like a few weeks ago that we qualified in Hamden Park so it's come around so fast Um, we're all buzzing you know um obviously we're the underdogs here so no one's really expecting us to get out of the group or to really get any results um from from the few games so 
we're buzzing about it. You know, we're um we're well prepared. We feel good, and um we're hopefully uh create a few shock results and your campaign it begins on the opening day of the tournament against the joint host australia i mean that's set to be quite the occasion isn't it in front of a, a sellout crowd of over eighty thousand. yeah um it's hard to really imagine what that's going to feel or look like um other than our captain katie who's obviously played for arsenal in some kind of massive champions league games don't think anyone else has really experienced um anywhere near that number of spectators. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how you kind of quite prepare for, for that. But um, at the end of the day, I think we can all draw on our experience from being full-time professionals and uh, to kind of, you know, be able to block that out as much as possible when we cross that line. So, um, yeah, it's going to be absolutely surreal, but um, something that we're all going to relish and we're all really looking forward to it. And what additional challenges, I suppose, come with with playing against the home nation? Uh, look, they're going to have a serious number of fans. It's going to be probably uh, a sea of yellow on that night. Um, but we're hoping to have a lot of Irish fans there as well. Obviously, a lot of people um, emigrate over to, to Australia. So we should have a big fan base too there. And yeah, obviously, there's a lot of hype. You know, you're walking around Brisbane and um, everyone knows that you're playing Australia. Um, everyone's been super nice to be fair uh, in terms, you know when we're going for coffee or um, anything like that it's been it's been nice but yeah look you, you you feel that you're in Australia you feel that this is kind of their home turf um, but as I said we love being the underdogs so uh, we're well up for the challenge and you'll be coming up against one of the world's best in, in Sam Kerr how much do you relish testing yourself in those sort of environments Look, that's the only way that you improve as a player. Um, you got to keep kind of pushing those comfort levels. And <laughs> um, obviously, she's yeah, she's up there um at the moment in terms of female footballers. Um, but look, we've we'll have done our prep on it. We've already started um in terms of how we're going to kind of negate her strengths. So, um, yeah, it's going to be tough. But we've got a lot of quality in our squad as well. Um, we're known for our defensive um qualities. So, yeah, we'll be well set up to try and negate those and um try and create our own kind of um, strengths in counteracting that. And and what are your expectations heading into this tournament, both both for yourself, but also for the nation? Look, on a personal standpoint, um, it's been a kind of difficult six to eight months, I would say. So um, I need to keep reminding myself of that. And it's easy to kind of get caught up um, in 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 kind of elite sport like you always want to push yourself and expect more of yourself you know first and foremost I'm absolutely delighted and honored uh to be in the 23 um so and then look on top of that um everyone's pushing for for uh for starting 11 place and then for kind of um for minutes so look I just hope to to feature at some point um if not I'm here to push the girls in training every single day so um yeah I'm just happy to be here and uh hopefully I'll I'll get some minutes um as a team uh look we are very much expecting to get out of the group um we're not here just to participate we really believe in our quality um you know we've been waiting to we're almost there in terms of qualification for a, a major tournament in the past few years so we're we're very much ready for it now and we definitely feel that we have the depth and quality in the squad to to get out of the group as you mentioned there it hasn't been the easiest last last six months for yourself as as Bristol City fans will know you, you missed a chunk of the season with injury that that road to the World Cup for yourself can you share a little insight on that yeah so I played my last well I, I featured obviously at the end of the season for a few games but prior to that I played my last game on the 4th of December against Durham I didn't see the pitch again um until I think it was towards beginning to mid April so um it was a very difficult road especially the first couple of months and trying to get me on the right rehab program um very frustrating I was kind of thought I was making progress certain days and then kind of it was two steps forward one step back kind of situation and uh, there were a lot a lot of tears for the first couple of months um not only because I knew I had the World Cup ahead of me, but because it was my first professional season. Um, I felt like I had a lot more to give and a lot more to prove, and I wasn't able to do that. 
Um, so yeah, finally we got me kind of um on the right program by the kind of end of February, and then just work as hard as I could in the gym to kind of get myself back on the pitch. And and uh, to be frankly honest, everyone between the female um med medical staff and the male medical staff kind of put their heads together and really really worked hard to to get me back up and running and thankfully as I said I featured in a few games at the end of the season it felt nice to be a part of that um game against Charlton Ashton Gate uh, securing promotion um and then yeah it was just about kind of you know how do I get myself ready for for potential work up selection and um the SNC um staff here with the the women's team were fantastic Erica and Jack like really really helped me in terms of getting me fit and ready for for camp so I owe a lot to them for getting me kind of back in check and for getting me I suppose here uh, at a world cup and and your journey throughout not not just that uh, that injury setback last last season but your journey has been a, a remarkable one to this point can you put into words how it feels to be on the eve of a world cup uh, representing your country on on the greatest stage yeah um feels like I'm in a dream a little bit like um you know growing up I never really dreamt to be frankly honest I never really dreamt of playing at a world cup um for me 15 years ago the idea that um I could go full time and earn a decent living out of it wasn't realistic and um, so it's yeah it's very very strange I feel like I'm kind of um faking it still <laughs> um if I can say that but um it's yeah it just goes to show that like um yeah hard work really does pay off that's all I can really say consistency and hard work pays off if you want something enough and you give enough of your time and attention to it um you should make it at some point um it doesn't always work out that way for everyone but I really do believe that hard work pays off it's worked for me I've never given up through all the setbacks I've had I've never given up I do owe a lot to other people for supporting me through it um but at the end of the day, I need to to be proud of myself for, you know, for overcoming some some big challenges.